Hello, my name is Emily, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to draw squares and circles in perspective. I'm first going to teach you where to place vanishing points to taper your edges for squares at any horizontal or vertical rotation in perspective. I will then teach you how to use vanishing points to create guides that tell you where to stop your tapered edges so that your shape is square and not rectangular. After this, I will teach you how to use these squares drawn in perspective to draw circles in perspective. Before we begin, we first need to understand what perspective is. Perspective is the art of drawing solid objects on a two-dimensional surface so as to give the right impression of their height, width, depth, and position in relation to each other when viewed from a particular point. Things will appear to get smaller the further away they are from the viewer. For example, the front and back edges of this piece of paper are the exact same size in reality, but one edge looks smaller simply because it's farther away from the camera. If the piece of paper is angled away from the camera differently, then the edges will change in length and proportion. This is perspective. This is the 3D illusion we see every day. If you want your drawings to look 3D, then you will need to create the same illusion. For a square to look like it has depth, its farthest sides will need to be shorter in length than its closer sides. Edges of a square will need to taper from the closer sides to meet the farthest sides. Here, these edges taper to meet one of the farthest sides, and these edges taper to meet the other farthest side. If a square is big enough or becomes an extremely long rectangle, its long edges will converge to a single point. This point is called a vanishing point. Vanishing points are places where things get too far away to be seen. You will need a vanishing point for each of the edges of your square that goes away from the viewer in a different direction. Squares have a total of four edges. Two edges will go in one direction and two edges will go in another direction. Edges going in the same direction will have the same vanishing point. Edges going the other direction will have a different vanishing point. For this square, one vanishing point for two of my edges is at the center of the page. The other edges of my square do not have a vanishing point because they are completely horizontal on my page. If an edge of a square does not angle away from the viewer, then that edge will not taper and will not have a vanishing point. In most cases, this happens when a set of edges is angled 0 degrees or 90 degrees on your paper, being completely vertical or horizontal. Squares will not have perspective when they have both 0 degree and 90 degree edges. Squares will only have one vanishing point when they have only one set of either 0 or 90 degree edges. Squares will have two vanishing points when they have no 0 or 90 degree edges. You create vanishing points by drawing rays out from your station point. Your station point is where the viewer's eyes are. Each ray coming from your station point will have a vanishing point placed on it where it crosses the horizon line. The angle a ray goes out from your station's point's horizontal axis will determine the angle a square rotates away from your viewer horizontally. Here's an example of a vertical square rotated zero degrees away from the viewer both horizontally and vertically. This square has both zero and 90 degree edges, so it will not have perspective. To rotate a vertical square horizontally, keep your two vertical edges vertical and taper your other two edges towards a vanishing point you choose. If you want a square to angle away 22.5 degrees away from your viewer horizontally, then draw a ray out at 22.5 degrees from your station's point's horizontal axis and make a vanishing point where it crosses the horizon line. This is your 22.5 degree vanishing point. Lines coming from this vanishing point will be a guide for your horizontal edges. It will show you what angle you need to taper your edges. A vertical square rotated away from the viewer 22.5 degrees horizontally will become slightly distorted and will no longer look like a perfect square. A vertical square rotated away from the viewer 45 degrees horizontally will become even more distorted. A vertical square rotated away from the viewer 67.5 degrees horizontally will become even more distorted. 
a vertical square rotated away from the viewer 90 degrees horizontally will distort and squish together so much that the square might look like a straight line. This happens when a vertical square is located directly above or below its vanishing point. In this example, the vertical square is a bit off to the left of its vanishing point, so you can still see a little bit of its depth. If I continue to angle the vertical square past 90 degrees to 112.5 degrees, the square will start to increase in depth and shape again, even more so at 135 degrees, and even less distorted at 157.5 degrees. When a vertical square is at 180 degrees, it is at the same angle as 0 degrees, so at this rotation, it again looks like a perfect square. To rotate a horizontal square horizontally, you will usually need two vanishing points. This means you will need to draw two rays out from your station point. Since squares have edges that come together at 90 degrees, the two rays you use to make your vanishing points on must come together at 90 degrees at the station point. Here is an example of a square made with a 22.5 degree vanishing point and a 112.5 degree vanishing point. These vanishing points rays come together at a 90 degree angle at the station point. Here's an example of a square made with a 45 degree vanishing point and a 135 degree vanishing point. These vanishing points rays also come together at 90 degrees at the station point. Here's an example of a square with a 67.5 degree vanishing point and a 157.5 degree vanishing point. These vanishing points rays come together at 90 degrees as well. The only horizontal square that will not have two vanishing points is a square with a 90 degree vanishing point. Horizontal squares with 90 degree vanishing points have another ray that is at zero degrees. Rays on the station's point's horizontal axis are usually parallel to your picture's horizon line, which means it will go on forever and will never cross the horizon line. This means the zero degree ray from the station point will not have a vanishing point. Lines for this ray are simply horizontal on your page. If you want your square to tilt somewhere between being vertical or horizontal, then you will have to do something a bit more complicated. To tilt a square forward or backward, first choose the vanishing points for your square's horizontal rotation, and then move one of those vanishing points either straight above the horizon line or straight below the horizon line. Your square will tilt towards or away from the vanishing point you move. If you want your square to tilt away from the vanishing point's original location, then move your vanishing point below the horizon line. If you want your square to tilt towards the vanishing point's original location, then move your vanishing point above the horizon line. The farther you move your vanishing point away from the horizon line, either up or down, the farther your square will tilt up into being vertical. If you want your square to be tilted at a specific angle, draw a ray from your station point at an angle that is halfway between zero and the angle of the ray going to the vanishing point you want to move. In this case, the vanishing point I'm moving is on the 45 degree ray, so I'm going to draw a line out at 22.5 degrees because 22.5 is the angle halfway between 45 and zero. At the point where this ray intersects the horizon line, draw angled rays out from this point until they are directly above or below the vanishing point you want to move. Vertical tilt angles are determined by how far these vanishing points rays are angled away from being vertical. Here's an example of a square with a vertical zero degree ray. This vertical ray will not have a vanishing point since its ray is on the vertical axis of the marked point. Lines for this ray will simply be vertical on your page. Your square will be a vertical square. Here's an example of a square with a vertical 22.5 degree ray. A vanishing point on this ray will tilt your square backward 22.5 degrees from being vertical. Here's an example of a square with a vertical 45 degree ray. A vanishing point on this ray will tilt your square backward 45 degrees from being vertical. Here's an example of a square with a vertical 67.5 degree ray. A vanishing point on this ray will tilt your square backwards 67.5 degrees from being vertical. Here's an example of a square with a vertical 90 degree ray. 
This ray will have a vanishing point on the original horizontal square's vanishing point's location. So the vanishing point won't move and the square is simply a horizontal square. Here's an example of a square with a vertical 112.5 degree ray. A vanishing point on this ray will tilt your square forwards 67.5 degrees from being vertical. This might sound confusing since these are different angles, but just remember that 67.5 degrees and 112.5 degrees are inverse angles being mere images of each other. 112.5 degrees is the same as saying minus 67.5 degrees. 112.5 degrees is simply 67.5 degrees going in a different direction. Here's an example of a square with a vertical 135 degree ray or a vertical minus 45 degree ray. A vanishing point on this ray will tilt your square forwards 45 degrees. Here's an example of a square with a vertical 157.5 degree ray or a vertical minus 22.5 degree ray. A vanishing point on this ray will tilt your square forwards 22.5 degrees from being vertical. Now it's time to learn how to create guides that will show you where to end the edges of your shape so that you can make a true square in perspective. With the information you have now, you could easily make the mistake of drawing a square like this, this, or many other ways. These would be rectangles in perspective, not squares in perspective, and this is not what we want. To make sure something is square, you need to create an X through it with lines that are 45 degrees away from the edges of the square. If the lines of the X goes through each of your square's corners, then you know that it is truly square. Squares have sides that are all the same length. For squares not in perspective, you can simply measure each edge to see if they are all the same length. Perspective, however, changes the length of a square's edge depending on the point of view. This is why this X is so important. Since your square is in perspective, your X will also need to be in perspective. X guides have vanishing points that are 45 degrees away from your square's vanishing points. If your square has a 22.5 and 112.5 degree vanishing point, then your X will come from the 67.5 and 157.5 degree vanishing point. Vice versa, if your square has a 67.5 and 157.5 degree vanishing point, then your X will come from the 22.5 and 112.5 degree vanishing point. It's the same for other angles. If your square has horizontal lines and a 90 degree vanishing point, then your X will come from the 45 and 135 degree vanishing point. And vice versa, if your square has a 45 and 135 degree vanishing point, then your X will come from a horizontal line and a 90 degree vanishing point. For vertical squares, if your square has a 22.5 degree vanishing point, then your X will come from the vertical 45 and 135 degree vanishing point located above and below your 22.5 degree vanishing point. If a vertical square has a 45 degree vanishing point, then your X will come from the vertical 45 and 135 degree vanishing point located above and below your 45 degree vanishing point. If your vertical square has a 67.5 degree vanishing point, then your X will come from the vertical 45 and 135 degree vanishing point located above and below your 67.5 degree vanishing point. If your square has vertical lines and a 90 degree vanishing point, then your X will again come from the 45 and 135 degree vanishing point located above and below your 90 degree vanishing point, and so on. At this moment in time, I have not yet figured out how to find X-guide vanishing points for squares that are tilted between being horizontal and vertical. If anyone knows or figures it out, please tell me in the comments below. For squares that are between being horizontal and vertical, I don't use X-guides. I use a different method to make sure that they are square. For these types of squares, I first draw a vertical square in perspective. 
I then use a vertical degree vanishing point to measure from my vertical square's top corners to see where my angled square's corners will be. To find this vertical degree vanishing point, draw a direct side view of a square being rotated backwards and forwards. These lines should show their true angle and length. If you want a square to tilt backwards 45 degrees, then draw a line from the vertical line to the minus 45 degree line. The angle of the line between my minus 45 degree line and the vertical line is the angle of the ray I need to use for my vanishing point. This line matches the angle of a vertical 112.5 degree ray. So I'm going to draw a vertical 112.5 degree ray and put a vanishing point on it. Lines from this vanishing point will tell me where to stop my 45 degree tilted edges. Other tilts will have other vanishing points for this guide. Simply see the angle between where you want to tilt and make a vertical ray with that angle to make a vanishing point. Now that you know how to draw squares in perspective, it's time to learn how to draw circles in perspective. Circles are very easy to draw in perspective once you know how to draw squares in perspective. To draw a circle in perspective, simply draw a square in perspective and then draw a circle within that square. Your circle should touch the center of each of your square's sides. Squares at different horizontal rotations will make slightly different sizes of circles. Squares at different vertical rotations will make all different types of circles. I hope this video helped you understand how to draw squares and circles in perspective. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in more tutorials about how to draw in perspective or how to draw, check my channel for more videos.